mythological Fu Zhui and his sister wife Nuwa were said to be the founders of China, also the inventors of the eight trigrams, which eventually are not only associated with the elements of the world, but with musical instruments, and additionally the inventor of the Qin, the, shall we say, national instrument of China, or at least ancient China. It's a zither, a box of strings, and you're hearing one in delightful piece called The Strummings of an Old Man in a Refined State of Intoxication, and it's pentatonic, and you can hear so la do, so mi, mi re do re do, and that is the Chinese major pentatonic. Do re mi so la do. Whole step, whole step, minor third, whole step, another minor third. Sometimes it's called an anhematonic pentatonic scale. It has no half steps. Guaranteed to be fairly positive and delightful. And here's what it looks like in the key of C. You just heard a version in F. So the story goes, the Emperor Wang Ti sent Ling Lun, which translates as the musician or the measurer. And here we already see the close connection between music and mathematics. Indeed, I went to Swarthmore College, and the only reason that Swarthmore, which is a nice Quaker school in its inception, and they had religious services where the basic idea was sit down and shut up and be inspired, no music. But the reason Swarthmore had a music department, the connection between music and mathematics. The Emperor Wang Ti sent the musician Ling Lun, the measure, to go out and cut reeds to tune the empire so that there wouldn't be any sort of disruptive noises in the world. And while the reeds, the trunks behind me, are a little too much to cut down, we wouldn't do that anyway, I do have a couple of Coke bottles. And what was discovered was the ratio of sounds. And this goes back to that trombone that we heard. The notion if you have two-thirds, if you take a pipe or a resonating body of air, the pipe you blow into, right, and you cut that pipe into two-thirds, and that's roughly here, you should get a sound a perfect fifth up. If you cut the reed in half, you'll get the octave up, but we want to get different pitches rather than that analogous pitch, octave up and octave up. So, let's try the pitch. And then two-thirds of the pipe of the resonating column of air, and we get... Yes, it works. And you can continue this principle. I just happen to have a third Coke bottle, and I have engineered this such that we now have two-thirds more above there. So we should get another fifth up from the original. And let's make sure that you hear both of those entities. A little flat, but you get the idea. Does this work on reeds? Well, I'm glad you asked that. I'm getting thirsty now that we've tuned these. Ah, I've ruined the intonation. Okay, not exactly Chinese, to my knowledge. I think this is a Greek pitch pipe. But the same ratios are true. Notice the long pipe, which, by the way, this long pipe serendipitously <coughs> corresponded <laughs> to my middle Coke bottle. Ooh. <coughs> Not bad, huh? Totally serendipitous. So that was actually, therefore, I think that's a G.
But if this is G, this would be a D. And notice the relationship. It's rough, but if this we consider a unit of one, one, two, three, four, five up, you can see that this one is roughly two thirds the length of the original. And do we get the perfect fifth up? <coughs> we sure do. And we can continue to take this principle and continue to generate notes. Fifth up from here, A. And again, this should be two thirds of where we left off. <coughs> and it is. How remarkable. And we can even go this one step further. So again, five up from here, starting where we begin. This is a nomenclature system that goes back to the ancient Romans. The Romans did not have a zero, right? Roman numerals. And that has been a bane for musicians ever since. So, one, two, three, four, five. <coughs> this one's going to be a little sharp, I think. <coughs> but close enough. Yes. So if you imagine this pitch pipe, this pan pipe, continuing with smaller, smaller and smaller and smaller, smaller pipes, you could continue this fifth relationship really ad nauseum. And indeed, the Chinese did. They wound up, well, before we get to that, we should say, you recall in Western music, we have 12 pitches, at least in contemporary Western music. As it turns out, once you generate with this fifth relationship, and you can see this with the chart. Let's start with the equivalent of a very low bamboo pipe. Two thirds of that, and that, etc. And now, notice perfect fifths are actually, we haven't gotten into these yet, but it's time to. Perfect fifths are three and a half steps. And you might notice that there's actually only one, two, three steps here. So now we're going to go to the black notes. And we'll stay on the black notes. And we've done it. We have generated a total of 12 pitches. The 13th pitch would actually be we start an F, it would be an F, a perfect fifth above here. We don't have that because of our limited range here. Only 88 keys. Truth to tell, the Chinese kept doing octave equivalents, so they didn't have to go up this high. But, as it turns out, I'm just going to take this down a couple of octaves. Here's the perfect fifth going back to the F. Acoustically, in terms of these octave equivalents, this turns out won't be exactly the same note as you started with down here. If you took it down a couple of octaves, it would be incrementally different. People in the West also dealt with this in ancient Greece, and the notion comes down to us as the comma of Pythagoras. And on our chart, I just realized, I'm not looking at the chart when I'm doing this, it gave you the chromatic notes, not in flats, but in sharps. So we had F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, but of course A sharp, same as B flat. Or is it? That's another question, isn't it? Because the 13th pitch was actually incrementally off by a microtone from the original pitch, that winds up being indeed a 13th pitch. Because of that, you can do a 14th, 15th, and the Chinese continued to generate pitches until they had 365, one for every day of the year. Of course, they tended to only use seven at a time, or even better, five. And that notion of five pitches, pentatonic music, we find pentatonic music in East Asia, Southern Africa, and extreme North Western Europe. How come? Well, in the middle of the Eurasian continent and also in North Africa, we tend to have heptatonic scales, seven note scales, rather than five. It's as if those five note scales were pushed away from something central that came out of maybe Central Asia. 
And indeed, that is the case. There was a good reason why the Chinese built the Great Wall and another good reason why the Roman Empire fell. And it has to do with them barbarians from Central Asia moving out in all directions. The climate in interior Central Asia is somewhat analogous to the interior west of the United States. Sometimes it rains, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't rain and you're keeping herds of goats, sheep, cattle, you got to keep on the move. Geography again, determining destiny, as does meteorology. The ancient Egyptians also had a spiritual approach to music and probably used microtones as well. They definitely do in folk music to the present day as you hear from clarinets, particularly double clarinets, and also rebob spike fiddles. And we've heard enough string instruments that maybe we better talk about them just a little bit. Three major divisions, the lyre type and the box type, and around here, the best we can manage is just simply showing you once again the inside of a piano. The harp and lyre type instruments are suspended strings. There is some sort of a crossbar upon which the strings are suspended. And this inside of an upright piano really is a fairly close analog. But by and large, we would consider the piano and zithers, such as the chin and the centaur from Middle Eastern tradition, as boxes of strings. And of course, the box of strings can be plucked, as you heard in the chin, and we can do a couple of plucked notes here again. We've heard them already. I put the damper pedal down. And of course, they could also be hammered. And the best thing we can do here is hit some of these strings, say, with an eraser. You could also pluck the strings, say, with a quill. I'll use the point of the pencil in that fashion. Much like a harpsichord, there are quills sometimes used on psalteries, etc. And then, of course, the mechanistic approach of the hammers of the piano coming out. Now the next string instruments, the third category of strings. So first the Arhu, Erhu fiddle from China, which is really seen a lot of wear over years of being around here for mere display. Two strings and the bow is actually between the strings and the strings are all tangled up and I don't think we can get any sound out of this at all. Not much. And a tambura from India. Also, terrifically badly out of tune, but there it is. Probably should be play, uh, check the big gourd down here. A lot of times there will be an additional gourd at the top. This one seems to be missing. Terry Riley's practice of tambura has not weathered reality particularly well over the years. These ideally, the drones should be tuned in fifths. This is the, the drone instrument in many Indian pieces. And a gourd for resonator. We, of course, had the snakeskin resonator, right, for the uh, And we have one more. And this a rebob, a spike fiddle from uh, Egypt that I purchased many years ago in a cafe where the musicians were wandering around the room. The strings are long gone on this. They put the spikes in the pockets of their robes and they wandered around the cafe playing wonderfully. I cannot use the uh, Arhu bow because of course that one's still attached to the broken strings, but wonderfully nasal, almost oboe-like string sound. And smiling as the gentleman walked, coming up to me, smiling more and saying, money. Well, he got his wish. Spike and really, amongst the most basic of the fiddles, right, spike fiddle, this is probably an old piece of furniture, two tuning pegs, it would have been two strings, 
on this. And the resonating, once again, like the Arhu, this is really a little drum down here. For some reason, I don't think it's snakeskin this time. Coconut shell in the back with perforated holes. Wonderful. Astoundingly, no violins, violas, etc. in the house. What's going on here? Oh, there we go. But we do have a wonderful string instrument played by a member of our family. So our final neck string instrument and get ready, get set, go with the electric bass from Megan. Of course, arguably the electric bass, because it has a solid body rather than uh, a resonator, such as uh, we've seen with these other instruments, it's really our fifth and final way of making sound. Shall we call this an electrophone? And of course, you've heard electronic sounds from Edgar Varese, etc. And since we have a real bassist in the house, I thought we may as well feature Megan rather than me, so we'd have a little bit of competency for a change. Well, we don't know what it sounds like. It's not even in tune. But... Well, it's pretty darn good compared to what I could do. Thank you, Megan.